<laughs> yeah, you know what we're talking about today. You see my shirt, you see the guitar. Even if you didn't read the uh, title, even if this is on autoplay, we all know. I've been having a difficult time making, deciding which video to do first because I have two guitars that have a very active lives going on right now, or at least their models do. Of course, in um, September, or, yeah, September, never mind, had its 30th anniversary, so Fender decided to commemorate it by bringing out a new Jagstang, which I won't be buying because it costs an arm and a leg. <laughs> And then, around the same time, suddenly, this turns up. I mean, I'm like, just, I'm online on social media and Instagram, and I run a website called Dean Machines at Google Sites, which I just converted to new sites. I think they have kind of improved it, so I'm keeping it there for the time being. Yeah, I'm that guy with that site. Anyway, we're going to talk about this guitar right now. Uh, so, it was maybe about September, October, November when the Jagstang came out. First thing I see is one of these sitting in a rack in some guy's house. And there's like a red strat next to it. It looks very familiar. And I'm just looking at and looking at the social media post and I'm like, Okay, this is from Odyssey Guitars. And they've got a Paul Dean guitar. And they have another red and black strat. Um, what's going on? <laughs> Two days later, then there's another picture. And you see the man himself smiling from behind the buckle rash near the rear contour on one of the originals. And that's right, we're talking about the Paul Dean Dean Machine guitars. I'm not going to give an extensive history like I did in my old one, and I know that my, I've got a mustache like I did when I did this ten years ago, but this is... You know, this is one of the special ones in my collection. It's also one of the rarest guitars I've got. So, if you want to go learn more about Loverboy, I'd say go check out um, maybe the Professor of Rock or Wikipedia or heck, go visit their website. They're still going. I got this T-shirt at their concert in 2019. I've been trying to see those guys for years. Anyway, I bought this anyway. Let's kind of talk about the history of the guitar a bit. Long story short, Paul Dean had a 64 Stratocaster. He smashed it imitating Pete Townsend. Put it back together, and it has certain resonance to it. Went for crap again. Built his own neck. Did his own mods. Um, put a Les Paul tailpiece on it and ground the intonation into it with an angle grinder, it looks like. And... What resulted was that guitar you heard on the first record. You know. So that's what that's what you saw was that first that first Stratocaster he had. I mean, it had the wacky anvil case pick guard that was like rubberized and volume one volume one tone and an extra toggle to get the extra pickup selector options out of the uh, pre-70 strat three-way switch i mean just plain awesome and the tone that that guy got was incredible i think it was like a at that point it was uh high watts high watt custom 100s from the highlight era and the channels were uh ganged i'm guessing he means he had one channel going in the other to get that kind of distortion that he had because I mean, really, I kind of really took off with Loverboy when I gained some confidence and wanted to throw a middle finger to my own generation because I just was in school and they were, you know, it was either new metal that was like whining about kid stuff or it was, you know, whining about kid stuff like the earth's coming to an end or it was, you know, boy bands. That's like all we had. And I'm like, I don't want to listen to that crap. I want to listen to this. With some party rock mixed in with a little bit of a heavy metal shredder type tone. Yeah, I'm a little congested today. Spent too much time in the cold. I'm warming up. So, this is the result of that strat. He took all his ideas, put them together, refined them, 
And then brought the Odyssey guitars. There's actually a great book uh, by a fellow named Craig that came out all about the history of Odyssey and it even includes this guitar in it. So this guitar here is the Hondo version. It initially started with the Odyssey version. So actually, but that's not entirely true. It actually started with Paul building his own. See, there's two prototypes that you'll see in the 81 music videos for, um, I believe the music videos were, well, actually there's one prototype you see in the music videos and one prototype you see in the concert footage. In the music videos, you'd see one kind of like this. It's got a egg-shaped pick guard, three single coils. It's got a three-way switch like this, but an extra toggle. Same setup as a Strat. There's some shots of him playing this thing in 83. It has a Telecaster style neck with a Dean machine and the Loverboy Courier font on the headstock. Someone posted that on Odyssey Guitars actually not long ago, so that guitar's still around and it has a gold Leo Kwan badass bridge on it too. The next one, the one that you saw him with all through the 1981 tour, was the one that had looked a lot like this but had dual P90s in it. <laughs> And that was like the one he'd play all night and then he'd switch to the strap for the kid is hot tonight, like at the very end of the set. So that was kind of the way that way it was segmented. This particular version that Hondo and Odyssey made didn't really crop up until about 82, 83 on their set lists or on their sets, but he was probably playing these as early as 82 because the originals were made in 81, 82. This one, the Hondo and the Odyssey are practically identical. I mean, there's a few key differences, um, mainly in the way this upper wing is shaped because Hondo put this little extra bit there. Probably so rowdy teenagers wouldn't knock the neck out of alignment if they went jumping around or slamming the guitar into stuff. Not like uh, this thing really has much of a problem with that. I mean, it is built like a freaking Telecaster and we all know how durable Telecasters are. And let's just go watch Keith Richards with one if, with unruly fan on stage. So, yeah, that's what this thing started off as, was the Odyssey version. The Odyssey version wasn't that different. Um, it was maple body, um, painted transparent red. You had the anti-scratch pickguard material. Um, there are two DiMargios DP-104 Super 2 epoxy humbucker pickups. 21 frets custom jumbo frets they called them one inch nut width a um, this style of headstock that sort of harkens back to the telly but actually to me looks kind of cool because it's unique and it's different it has a gibson style nut 10 degree headstock tilt and one of the most defining features nobody ever talks about the uh resonance slots that go down parallel to the truss rod on both sides and if you uh, look at Odyssey Guitars' current social media, you can see them making the necks. You can actually see where they put the resonance slots into the neck. It's really cool. So, Paul commissioned 50 of these, um, had a few for himself, gave a few to friends and family, split the remaining 45 or so in half. Half of those went to charity. Half of those went to Canadian guitar shops. Um, let's just say a ultra-reliable source emailed me and told me that he actually had the necks on some of those uh, rebuilds redone. Which is kind of cool. I mean, <laughs> just makes a more personal connection to the artist and the instrument there. Anyway, um, I went ahead and... Um, so, Hondo. Now, if you saw Hondo, when they, if you've seen my site, you've seen how I have the old Hondo ad, the first one that came out that had uh, the actual Odyssey guitar in it, because he sent him one of the Odyssey guitars, but it had the uh, stop tail like a Strat on it. And they copied it. Um, I get, I'm i gonna go more in depth on my website, but basically it went through a few prototypes. The first one was very much like what Hondo would typically do. But I'm guessing, and this seems like it might've been the first one in the designer series, because that's what this belonged to is Hondo's designer series. And those were those were like the Jagstang of the 80s. I mean, they were Asian-built instruments built to Japanese Fender quality, and they were really nice, and they had the option of, like, professional-grade electronics. The Jagstang actually didn't even get that lucky. It got the other stuff. But anyway, we're going to talk about the Hondo here. So, 
Um, so when Hondo copied it, I mean, they got the formula right, and this is what resulted. Um, the differences are it has a Sen Ash body, which is, the, this is not plywood. You can see this. If you look really close, I'm tr I actually set my light so you could see the wood grain. You can see this is not plywood. This is a two-piece Sen Ash body on this guitar. Two-piece. It's not book matched, but it's only two pieces. I don't even have any other guitars with that few pieces except stuff I've built. Um, another thing, they copy the anti-scratch pick guard exactly, so it's the same thing. Um, Three-way switch, one volume, one tone. Um, the neck is indeed chambered. Um, the way I was able to find out was I put... I was trying to get this just right. And I got it to a point where I had the truss rod completely undone. So don't worry about neck issues on these, because these things, they have a neck that's like probably stronger than a telly neck. The resonance slots are there, because when I undid the truss rod, it sounded like I had hornets running around inside my neck. <laughs> um, so I put the truss rod back in. It only needs one eighth of a turn. I play with Ernie Ball Paradigm 9 through 42s on mine. So very light strings, very low action, and very well executed um we're going to kind of go on there it's a 20 this one's the paul dean 2 there was a paul dean 3 that had a stratocaster pickup config and a, a strat tremolo they made them in the normal design but they also they made them in the normal cherry red anti-scratch design but they also have them in tobacco sunburst and tiger stripe and <laughs> They, they took more liberties with that model, and I've heard that they have push-pull pots for the pickup switching, so they really did a quality job on both of them, it seems. Um, this one, so, but we're going to talk about the two. So the two, two-piece Senash body, anti-scratch pick guard, you have this clone of the Leo Kwan badass bridge. These were actually made famous by BC Rich. They were using those on their Warlocks and their Iron Birds and stuff. This thing is basically like a... Uh, Tamed down Warlock almost. Um, it's got DiMarzio Super 2 humbuckers. They're not super high output. They're more like a classic Gibson at 8.4K ohms. Uh, they're ceramic magnet. They're epoxy potted. They're twin hex pulls so you can set the balance for all your strings. Um, no neck plate. It's got the recessed neck joint. And actually, I don't know if it'll turn up on camera, but you can kind of see there's a slight angle there to make the neck upper neck fret access really good on this i mean i can go up to the 21st fret on this guitar and it's really comfy and i have huge freaking hands so <clears throat> neck is actually an interesting profile it's one inch nut width and it widens out to like wide at the end and when i was watching paul dean's lesson for the weekend video i noticed his strat has the same profile as this so they did every bit as good with this as they did with Cobain's Jagstang. So, <laughs> and then 10 degree headstock tilt, of course. You can kind of see it. It's very subtle. This was done to keep the uh, string tree strings from binding on string trees up here, and it really works. But it also has a added effect because I like crazy noises from my guitars of being able to do that. I can play some notes up there. Um, you have uh, sealed gear machine heads. Some of these came with Ro Grover Rotomatics. This mine didn't come with those. I don't really mind. I like these Shaler style ones better anyway. Personally, I've had Grover Rotomatics and I had a few problems with them. But it's probably because they were a hundred. They were like forty years old and probably were used in smoky bars for a million years and not well taken care of. This guitar, as it came to me, it was pretty much a case queen. I think it even had the original strings on it. Um, had the DeMar... So these guitars, I've found out recently, had actually three different pickups. Um, the Samic Wikia says they came with either um, the Hondo X10s, which is what this originally had, or you got DiMarzio K10s, which were aftermarket clones by DiMarzio of the Super 2. But I have a Facebook group even though I'm not really on Facebook that much. And a guy showed me one of these. He bought brand new in 1985, and it had the True Blue DiMarzio Super 2s in it. So these did come with Super 2s sometimes. Of course, his was an end of production, so maybe they just didn't have any K10s left over. But still, you know, that's kind of cool. 
I put actual period correct Super 2s with the hottest at the bridge in mind because I wanted to have the exact setup he had and to see what it would be like through my rig. But as you can see, it sounds awesome. <laughs> So, yeah, my house is loud. <laughs> anyway, so I use this for quite a bit of stuff. And while it's pretty glaringly obvious, I use this probably the most often for Loverboy covers on YouTube or wherever else I might end up playing them. I actually use this for original music quite a lot. I mean, on my band lab, it's all over the place. I mean, I had, you know... Uh, I had this track called Information Super Ghetto with like the uh, auto-tuned modem and uh, the Windows 95 song at the end. <laughs> I was like... Oh. It'd also be, I would probably use this for Fact and Opinion Live, you know, old Smoking 66 song, you know. Perfect for the solo, of course. You, know, you have that one. So I play it for a lot of my own stuff. And of course it does, you know, the, the lover boy stuff, you know, and be like kind of noodling through them a little bit so it does all that too play it now why do i have a hardtail in my arsenal so i like this also because it's a hardtail and i can change tunings quickly on it and i don't always need that and i don't always need the bar you can usually tell when i'm using this one because the tone gets a little more bitey and there's no whammy bar you know so i also use it in drop d a lot or play some play some old stuff that you might remember. that on on quite quite a few sounds um, maybe you know some other stuff use it for
for, like, car stuff, you know. So, yeah, I, I use this thing for a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, we're speaking sound garden. sort of thing. I actually used it on my own stuff kind of like that. You know, you probably heard this one if you were listening to some of the stuff that I got up here. Yeah, this thing gets a lot of use. And I'm sure a question some people who've been watching a long time might ask. Why, why if this thing's been gigged and played live and in the studio so much, why doesn't it look as beat up as my other guitars? Well, I don't know. Hondo painted this thing with some incredible paint. I had a guy actually throw a beer can at one show, hit this thing. Didn't even leave a dent. The Hondo literally kicked it back in the audience. So Dean did a pretty good job on this design. And I guess this is an appropriate time to kick in about the new guitars. So Odyssey Guitars has come back. They have a new website, odysseyguitar.com. They're still in Canada. They're still building them in Vancouver. And currently it looks like he's got about like nine different Paul Dean guitars in the works now. Um, he... The first prototype that I saw this year um, that came about was a prototype that looked a lot like this one, but it had a Floyd Rose on it. So it looks like Dean's arming up to actually use some of these. <laughs> um, I saw another one th uh, around Christmas time. It's got a hex pole humbucker in the bridge, a hot rail in the neck, and two... I don't know if they're switches or googly eyes right here. I know he likes to put like just min minuscule stickers on his instruments once in a while. I've seen him with the Chiquita banana sticker on the strat, so. But I don't know what's there. It looks like there was a secret, some kind of secret switcher doohickey thing there. I don't know. It was, it was pretty neat to look at. So there's some new ones in the work, and even a bass. I'd, I'd love to see one of these as a bass. I think this body would work real well as a bass. As for me, um, I'm my gas was officially cured when I got this thing. You notice how I. There have been multiple reasons why I don't make a lot of videos, and one of the main ones at first was because I'm just very busy. I mean, I have a career, I have a life, I have a wife, I have animals to take care of. But, you know, other than my commitments, I also have the basic fact that this is the guitar that effectively cured my gas and stopped me chasing after stuff, because this was the final bucket list guitar that I always wanted, and now I have it. 
and it's been a righteous tool in my collection. Um, I still bring it out all the freaking time. And anyway, you know, check out Odyssey. Check out my new two new websites because I got one at Neo Cities where I'm going to be posting a lot of cool stuff. It's being rebuilt right now. And then I have another one um, that's also being done, uh, being kind of rebuilt at the moment, which is the Dean Machines website. And I posted the links in the description, so there you go. Anyway, this is CreepingNet signing out, and I'll see you in the next video.